So alkene hydrogenation with Wilkinson's catalyst probably occurs via a mechanism kind of like this one. To get started, the first thing that we're going to do is lose a phosphine ligand. So this is going to be triphenylphosphine dissociation. And the reason that we do that is to free up some space around the metal um, so that that way there's room for new ligands to enter. Okay, and so once, so the compound that we called Wilkinson's catalyst before might better be called Wilkinson's pre-catalyst because it, um, it you know, it, the first thing that has to happen is we have to get the catalyst ready. Now, once we've lost that phosphine ligand, we can start the catalytic cycle. And so the first thing that's going to happen is oxidative addition of our hydrogen. So this is going to be oxidative addition. And so we're going to imagine that our, we've got our rhodium compound. And we're going to add that hydrogen. And we're going to imagine that it adds cis. Okay, so once we've done oxidative addition, this was rhodium-1, it's now rhodium-3, um, the next thing that can happen, or that, that needs to happen, is we have addition of our alkene. And so in our case, we are using 1-butene, um, and so we imagine that that comes in, and it occupies that coordination site um, that you know nobody's using right now. So there's an empty coordination site there for the butene to come in. And we still have our hydrides and our triphenylphosphine and our chloroligand. Okay, so we still have rhodium-3, but now before we had um, like a, an electron deficient rhodium-3, now we have a fully saturated rhodium-3. So the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to have 1,2 insertion of the alkene into the rhodium hydride bond. So, so let's hear, think about what this is going to look like. Um, we're just going to imagine that the alkene hops into that rhodium hydride. Okay, so I'm going to change the color here because we're going to change the bonds. Um, so one, two, three, four, and then the hydride is here on the end, or what used to be the hydride is now a hydrogen. Um, everything else is, is still the same, so we still have one hydrogen left over, and we still have our triphenylphosphine ligand and our chloroligand. Okay, so now, so again, the, the alkene has inserted itself into the metal hydride bond. The last thing that we need to do in order to regenerate our catalyst and produce our product is to undergo reductive elimination, which will release the product. So here will be our product, which was the butene we had before, but now the hydrogen has been added to the carbons where the double bond was before. So we release our butane and um, in so doing, so, so basically we're, again, we're, we're connecting these two, they reductively eliminate in order to release the product and regenerate the catalyst. So that now we're back to rhodium-1 and we're back to not having any lichens and we're ready for a new H2 and a new alkene to come in again. In general, the steps in this mechanism are reversible, but that final reductive elimination in this mechanism is irreversible, and that's what drives the reaction forward. That alkane has much less affinity for the catalyst than the alkene did, because in that alkane, there's no electron-rich pi region for the catalyst to grab onto. So once that butane floats away, uh, we're ready to do the catalytic cycle again.